Welcome and welcome once again to Undiscovered Realm here in White Plains, New York. How is everybody doing today? <laughs> so here we are. We are getting started here. We had a little issue with that, that um, false alarm, but everybody's great. Everybody's happy. We're here. Thundercats ho! Uh, <laughs> so we're just going to get started. Um, we're going we're gonna to welcome to the stage here already. We got Lynn Lipton, the voice of guitar, and White and Kick. And we've got the group of the voice of Tigra and Wiley Cat. And coming up here from behind, the man and myth the legend, here he is, Lilo himself. So I was I, I I had a crush because I um, Larry we had this race and uh, he tripped me. <laughs> and I was and that's the kind of, that's the kind of I know he is. So yes, we have uh, we have, uh, we have three great legends here. Um, so we're very we're very excited. Yeah, we're very excited to come here and get settled. And if you notice, the first thing the voice actors do is adjust the microphone. <laughs> welcome guys, welcome. It is such an honor and a pleasure to see you all here. We got this great group of uh, fans here, I mean, whose lives, you know, you, you've enriched and, you know, people love Thundercats. So I, I guess really to kind of get things started, um, we'll just go across the board here uh, with the three of you. How, how did you how did you how did you find this world of Thundercats? Larry and I talked about a week ago. Um, Rankin Bass, who produced the show, we're you know, all these holiday specials, and then here's this like rock and roll theme, which you just heard, action adventure series. What got you all to Thundercats? Well, I, 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 it was an audition for. Uh, it was just you know, as an actor, you're always auditioning and. I'd say about 80% of the time you don't get the job. And um, it was just one of those auditions you walk in and you did this. And the producer, or the woman, the director, was Lee Doniger, who was our sort of savior leader. And she hired me, and I'm ever grateful, because she said, can you do all the female voices? She, she, which I did say for right? Yeah. And, um, it was the best job, you know. There was a hell of a lot of drugs in the room. And, <laughs> and Larry was mostly naked at the time. <laughs> I was really surprised. I looked a lot better back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, and it was just very lucky. It was a fun job. It wasn't like work. And, and I was with all these guys. And they were wonderful. And Bob McFadden. And Earl Hammond, who and Earl Hyman, who was the actor on the old Cosby show, he played the father, and um, and Bob McFadden and everybody. And some of them are gone, but you know, to be the only woman in, in this room was these great, great, fun people. You know, it was it was great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Three more. I think it's covered it. I think that does it. Uh, all right. Next, uh, I think exactly as, as Lynn was saying, it's one of my favorite parts about the Thundercats world and how I got into it. It was just another audition, another day, another audition. Yeah. Um, didn't know what it was going to become uh, at all. Uh, we sent to uh, we sent to the Rankin Bass office, not to a recording studio. And my recollection of, of it was in an office with them, with uh, Jules Bass and Lee Daniker, the director, Jules Bass of Rankin Bass. And basically, they said, well, we have, you know, cartoon characters. And we, can you do a, you, know, you do younger voice? And can you do, a, okay, can you do an older voice? And can you do the, the hero type? And can you do a I, I did everything I could think of. Any silly voice, anything I could throw at them, just in hopes of getting this job, whatever it was, because it was a job. Uh, and then to find out, I don't know, I don't know how many days or later uh, that hey, you got the job. And I was like, oh, that's really, that's nice. 
And then they said, no, no, this is going to be a series. They're going to do a whole bunch of episodes of this. And yeah, it turned out to be, as Lynn said, just uh, about the best job I had in all the years uh, that I worked in terms of the fun of working with, you know, really professional people that I looked up to and because I was relatively new in the business. Um, and uh, yeah, just from a silly audition. And sometimes, sometimes life is good and <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the fates are kind. So, thank you. Yeah, the audition process is a bit, it's uh, sometimes very frustrating, you know, because like, uh, like Lynn said, probably don't get 80% of ones you go to the night, but it's higher than that. Because, you know, most of the day is going from one audition to another, maybe going to a recording session, if you're lucky like to get another, you know, get a job. And I, the thing I remember most about the audition at Breaking Bass was um, they had the walls lined with drawings of what the characters looked like. And what the Thunder Tank was and the Ancillary. Because remember, nobody ever knew. No, none of us knew what the symbol was about. No, nobody except people who wrote it and everything knew what Thunder Tank was. So when we got there, we just knew it was going to be an animated series or so on. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, they, um, had these pictures all over. And they, when it's your turn to go in and audition, they asked, uh, at least asked me, to, uh, to do an audition for one uh, Thundercat and one Mutants bad guy, you know. And I remember the most important thing they said to me was, um, for the Thundercats themselves, we don't want cartoon voices, because they're like half human, you know, half animal. And um, so we do, you know, a human voice, Talks like a human box, you know. Uh, and then for the mutants, that's where you really get to you know, act. And you act your day, and it's most fun to play a bad guy in something. Because you can, you can be over dramatic, you know. So I, so I, I, I picked the line over to check the audition for, I guess, because you were more than fun to get. I said, I may as well be the boss of the place, you know. <laughs> if, if I did. And then I like the picture of Jack in my hand. So I uh, decided before I went in, <clears throat> I was thinking of Jackal. Jackal is kind of like a, a, a wolf, you know, they're sneaky and they're dirty and they and, and they're, they're, um, And the first thing that came to my mind, my mind was one of my favorite old shows, uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. You guys old enough to remember Rocky and Bullwinkle? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there was a character named Snidey Whiplash, and he was the ultimate villain. Wore a black cape and a hat and a mustache like this, you know. <laughs> I'm going to get you now, and tie you to the rain. So I kind of combined those in my mind, the CDs and for, uh, for um, Jacqueline, and came out. We must have the under that. Yes? <laughs> And the rest is like a, a long history. Yeah. <laughs> I must say, you know, during, we did, what, 128 episodes? Uh, 130. 130. 130. 130. And, and, you know, every time there was a new episode, sometimes there were new characters. So we would actually audition for the characters in the studio that day, you know, and, and the guys would say, if it was a female character, I'd say, what do you think I should do? And, and Larry would say, oh, do Captain Pepper and do, you know, do an English. It, they would give me suggestions, and, and that's how I found the character, because they would bring in a picture of, of a cartoon character, a new cartoon character in Thundercats, and um, like Mandora. I remember that Mandora is a character, and, and Larry said, because he knew, he knew this about me. I, I used to do, love to do impressions of dead stars, and I know that sounds like a crazy thing, but like, or, or stars' relatives, and I used to do this silly impression of John Wayne's sister, <coughs> and John Wayne, uh, uh, you might all be too young, but John Wayne was a 
uh, a movie song, and he used to talk kind of like, oh, I just don't know what you're talking about, you know. And Larry said, why don't you do John Wayne? You know, like a sister. <laughs> and that's what Mandora is. Mandora is Larry King's version of John Wayne's sister. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> well, you're doing it pretty good, kid. <laughs> See? So, so, so um, like you said, the rest is history, Larry. You just mentioned that with Thundercats. And it, it's a very rich history. The show almost what, 40 years, years, a little over 40 years ago, the show came out. Um, and obviously, you guys travel around the country and beyond meeting fans. Um, you got all these people here today seeing you. Um, when did you really, when did it sink into you guys that Thundercats became more than just this cartoon series that you all just went in for another audition and became bigger? I was at Toys R Us. Rest in peace. <laughs> God, I miss Toys R Us. I was Christmas shopping uh, about a year after the show had been on the air. And uh, at Toys R Us, and uh, the time previous to that that I had come to Toys R Us, there, were, um, there was a, uh, a row, a single row of Thundercats merchandise, you know, action figures and stuff like that. But this particular time when I came back, two weeks before Christmas, there were three aisles, all Thundercats. And they had ones for E-Man, you know. And, uh, so anyway, I, I walked in and I saw that and I thought, oh my God, this show's a hit. <laughs> you know? And as I walked up one of the aisles, there were two young boys, probably eight, nine, ten years old, looking at the action figures. And, and I got close, I heard one of them say, I'm gonna get Tiger. He's the best, you know. And smart uh, kid. Well, I dissuaded, <laughs> I, I dissuaded him of that notion. And uh, and then the other one said something about no Pantro. I'm gonna get Pantro. Well, I couldn't help myself. <clears throat> Excuse me, boys. Why don't you get Lionel? He's the guy who says soar the moments. Come to my hand. They looked at me like I was a pervert or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I. I was used to that look, I get that a lot. And uh, so I just figured, oh, okay, the hell with it. And as I, I they did, just stood there looking at me like this, I felt like an idiot, so I said, kind of slunk away. And as I'm walking away, I heard one of them say, Indians sound like Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, no more. My, uh, Kid, if you only knew, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, my, recollection of the first inkling of the success was the first ratings that came out um, when it was number one. Um, I, it didn't, it didn't dawn on me that it would, what it might lead to the concrete thought about it that I had at the time was, well, well then I guess we'll keep making episodes. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to just shut us down, you know, back on the yeah. street, uh, <laughs> nothing to do. Um, and uh, it uh, continued on that way. And we did, yeah. as we said, 130 episodes, and then Silver Hawks after that, and 65 uh, of those, like six. No, that was also 130, was I believe. Yeah, wow. yeah, we did the two full seasons, I believe. I'm pretty sure, anyway. Um, and, well, maybe not, maybe you're right, maybe it was 65. I, th then also the, the, the um, uh, Tiger Sharks, and Tiger Sharks. The, yeah, the, the other, the smaller series that came after. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was just wonderful. Uh, the um, the fact, the, the notion that it was anything more than that uh, didn't come for me until later on. Uh, one particular instance, uh, a friend of ours, my, my wife and I, a friend, was a uh, social worker and worked with uh, 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 mothers and children of uh, broken homes. Uh, and when I had told her, told her friends about, oh, I was doing this cartoon series. Uh, she commented that she knew some kids who were big Thundercats fans, and that I think I could have, get anything, assign anything, um, you know, that she might be able to give to the, these kids. I didn't, who didn't have anything, found, I don't remember what it was, something, just made a little eight by 10 copy somehow, and signed it to the kids. And then she came back and, and said how just thrilled these kids were to get this, 
and that uh, just gave me the first inkling of the the power, you know, uh, that this kind of thing could have in someone's life. Uh, and now, the the, the men and women <laughs> in their uh, 40, 40s and well, in their 40s now and, and, and beyond, and their kids and. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's hard to believe, honestly. Um, there, there was one instance somewhere in the middle years. Um, I was at an, a commercial audition, and a friend of mine was was talking to me, and you know, we were just having the kind of chat that you have in an audition in the waiting room. And he pointed to a young guy who was standing in line for his audition. He, he pointed. He said, "Hey, he's wearing a Thundercat shirt." Um, and he went over to this young fellow. And said, oh, you know, you're a fan of Thundercats. He said, well, that's, he did some of the voices for Thundercats. <coughs> and much to my amazement, this young fellow was, wow, really? You did a sign my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I did <laughs> sign my shirt. And you said, 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was more inflation, 25. And I remember, um, I used to go up to, uh, in New York, uh, they're not homeless kids, but I used to go up to Harlem and, and read to kids in, in the schools. And just because I like to do that, and it was a lot of fun. One day I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring a script, a French like script. And we just recorded something. And I, I figured maybe the kids would, you know, like to play the parts because I thought that would be such a wonderful thing for kids to, you know. So I made like these little scripts in the script of Thundercats and I, I went up to the school and, and I had no idea that Thundercats, because we're always in a we studio or I was always doing a play either on Broadway or off and he, but this was our job, we never knew what the world thought of Thundercats and I brought this script and the kids went crazy. And they played, I let them play all the parts. And that's when I knew, I mean, they really saw the moments and they, you know, they, they were fighting. It was great. It was just great. I had no idea because, you know, yeah. we're in a studio recording it. We had no idea what the real world thought of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all, <clears throat> as I recall, we all, meaning the cast and uh, the crew, Early on, after maybe five or six episodes, I remember sitting in the lunchroom or something talking about, you know, this is really well written. This, this series is well written. And then somebody said, and then, oh, and then we had never heard the music yet. You know, because you have to animate first. I, I'm sorry. You have to uh, do the voices, record the voices first. Some people think that, that they, uh, you do the animation and then we try to match our lips to it as it's really possible. But uh, then the day is that the music is just coming from her. Don't play it for it. And when they hit that thing, <laughs> oh man, it sounded like no other cartoon yeah. series. I just want to tell you a really funny story. There was an actor, I, I was doing a play on Broadway called Sherlock Holmes. And it's all very English, and everybody's very English. Mm -hmm. And the lead actor at the time was a guy named Robert Stevens, who was, he was a fine actor, and he, I think he drank a little too much. And, you know, you're <laughs> doing a long run in a show, and you know, you're like, eh, what can I say? All of a sudden, he found out that I did Thundercats, and he just, it was like a revelation. You know, excuse me, did you do Thundercats? Did you do a market? And, and he's, uh, a lot of times he had a drink or two, you know, and <laughs> he was like, excuse me, that's that market, that's the every best thing I've ever seen. And I didn't use the word because there are kids here. And, and you know, it was so funny to me. That it had such a worldwide um, acceptance and popularity. And uh, uh, I think Lee once 
played me uh, a version of it, not in Japanese, but some, you know, like Thundercats in another language. I know I heard it once in Spanish, and it was just so funny because the actors that they got to dub our voices were, you know, it's like, oh, did I really sound like that? <laughs> it was really good. It was like a lot of fun to hear other people do it. And like you said, it was really a bold when at that time when you were making the show, you didn't see what was going on outside the world because there was no social media, there was no internet. So yeah. now here we all are, you know, celebrating the work that you did so many years ago. What's the internet? <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of that, let's hear from some of the folks out here. If anybody has a question, um, we'll get, get that started. And it was just wonderful. And 
scary. And, and, and just a nice, funny man. But boy, that's, it scared me. I don't know why. Well, you, you know, the, uh, when Mumra does it, the transition, you know, Asian spirits of evil transform. So you know, on the screen, uh, Mumra starts drooling this green. <laughs> Why? Yes. Earl actually did that. He yes. would get sloppy. Remember? Sometimes. Yeah. You know, he would spit all the stuff coming out of his mouth. So he would go like, I remember how. There it is. And I don't know about you guys, but I would watch the script and I, I would look a page or two ahead. Whenever I saw, oh, Mom Ross wanted to do the thing, I would move a little further away. <laughs> But, well, right, just, I, would, yeah, I, would, I would try to be very conscious of my reaction because it was so it was so great to watch her do that. Oh, and I tried God. to make sure that I was back far enough from the microphone that if I laughed or, or you know just yeah. was enjoying it, that I wouldn't mess up his work because he really worked so I didn't get red in the face. No sweat. Oh, oh God! God. And he would just scream, <laughs> and I would you know feel terrible if you messed up the take and maybe I could do it over. Yeah. So I'm, I'm but really all, he that. always, our, our director, who was a wonderful woman named Lee Donegan, she was in the room, in the, in the studio with us. And she had a habit, always had a habit of, you know, uh, to, would, let's, let's do another one for a safety, which is a way of saying, just in case there wasn't something right with the take, that, you know, she would always ask for another one. And when Mumra was, I mean, she'd say, oh, that's great, girl. Well, no, let's just do a safety on that. And I always saw Larry back away again. You know, like, oh, God, he's going to spit all over me. I thought about bringing a plastic sheet. <laughs> like Gallagher, remember the comedian Gallagher? Yeah. All right, cool. We have another question here for you from this channel. Hi, Lynn, Peter, and Larry. Thanks for being here today. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. Um, for decades, there's been rumors and rumblings about a live action or CGI adaptation of Thundercats for the big screen. At any point over that time, have you guys been contacted to contribute to such a project, either as an actor or as a consultant? I have. I have. Have you? I don't think they would want me any reviews. I still have that leotard, but it's not a pretty picture. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to see that. <laughs> no, I, I haven't been contacted by you. And, and you're right, every, about every seven or eight years, there's another rumor that comes right, out. Right, right. That they're making. And in fact, the most recent one, they even went so far as to say uh, uh, that Warner Brothers has hired a director and a screenwriter. Me. The director is the guy who um, did King Kong versus or Kong versus Godzilla, right. or whatever. and then it just goes away. You don't hear about it. I wish they would. I wish they would do another, another do a, a movie. I wish they would hire us to do something. Well, if it probably an usher in the theater. I would be Chito's grandmother. I would, I would just, you know, like to do that if it was live action. I, you know, yeah, like just like live action. Oh, Chitara. Oh. You know, why don't you clean your paws? I mean, you know, you're running so much, you keep, you just have dirty paws on it. You know. uh, has anyone seen my bowl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm visible to everybody. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have time for a few more questions. This gentleman here. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you. Um, Thank you. This is kind of interesting. My last question, but I was curious. I'm curious about the process with animation. Was the whole cast together for all of the recordings, or were there times that it, where you had to just kind of go based on with the whole cast together in the studio the whole time? We were so all lucky days. because most animation, certainly other animations that I've done, you are in a studio alone. You often just looking at the picture and getting it. It's called a click. Um, it, it's ADR, called, yeah. You know, and you are basically dubbing to the animation and. We were so lucky because most animation is done that way, certainly now. But we were together and it gave us just 
fun and it was it was very easy to go to work. I mean, I go home and think, I'm getting paid for this, you know. Larry is one of the most talented and funny people I know, and Peach is dear, and all, all the old guys, you know, who were like masters of voices that you learn from. You learned how to do it from Bob McFadden and the guy who did Mama Earl Hammond, and, and you know, so it was, it was always kind of very joyful, and I felt absolutely lucky. Yeah, we were always, all five of us yeah. in the studio together, with this minor exception of uh, at one point, let's say we're at lunch and Lee Donker decided she wanted to change a word or two. She might just have that person come in and do it. You know, but when we were recording, well, not recording, everybody in the room, and and I, to this day, I think uh, any actor would would rather be in the ensemble. He would, you know, I mean, can you imagine? Going to a play, and the first character comes out and does all his lines. <laughs> Thank you. And the next person comes out and does all. That's what it's like when you work just by yourself. I mean, I'm I'm still doing. Uh, I'm I'm on a couple. Of, I'm still doing uh, Teen Titans Go, and a brand new one, uh, Pokemon Horizon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've already done 45 of them, and it's supposed to start in. Well, it's it's only even now. It's a little bit. But um, yeah, it, it's always better because, like Lynn said, when you're together as a group, especially if you're a group like ours, we really became like family. I mean, we, yeah. we really love each other. But we worked together for so long. You know, it took three years to record all those Thundercats and Silverhawks and Tiger Shark. And then we did a Saturday morning cartoon series called The Comic Strip. Anybody remember that? It was four 15 minute shows, two hours. Then we did four or five holiday specials. Yes. The Adventures of what, the Life of Adventures of Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yes, yes, yes. That was claymation. Yes, so three or four years we were seeing each other at least a couple of times a month to, to work on this. And we all became very tight. I know we used to have Christmas parties and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I just really feel that it's better for me. it's better when we work. Because now let, let's see if I get called in to do a session. Um, uh, I'll get there. I'm the only one there and they'll record all my lines. And then I leave and then another you, you record. You don't have to record to uh, video, right? Uh, it was, it was Pokemon Horizon, they're doing what they call ADR. Yes. Oh, the difference, yeah, well, the difference is uh, with, uh, Pokemon Horizon has already been on the air in Japan for three years. So what we're actually doing is just overdubbing, we're not, we're not the original. You know. mm -hmm. And for, for that, I mentioned earlier that you always do the voices first and then you do the animation. Well, since the animation is already recorded for this, it kind of turned everything around. Oh. Now you watch a screen and you they, they play from a certain point before your line comes up. And then three seconds before your line comes up, you hear beep, beep. It's like that. And then on the third beep, you start reading your line. It's interesting, but it didn't take a little while to get used to it. Yeah. yeah. It's more fun to work with a lot of people in the room. It just is, you know. And these guys, they're just not nice people. <laughs> you know? yeah. But you take it, you know. <clears throat> guys, I have to thank you. This has been an amazing panel. We're just about out of time, unfortunately. But if you guys have some other questions, you can come visit their, their tables downstairs. We've got. Uh, the whole weekend you're going to be with us. So, you know, again, thank you for your contributions to all of our childhoods, you know, and the generations to come. Um, so let's get a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And we always keep in mind, always have, that uh, if it weren't for you people, we wouldn't be sitting here now talking about, you know, Something like Thundercat, so give that big hand. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you for being fans all these years. Yeah. It's amazing to me. Yeah. Living legend. Thank you. <laughs> so, can, so, can we eat now? <laughs> thank everybody. Make sure you come out and see them downstairs.